There seems to be several schools of thought about the advantages and disadvantages of a prepper dog. Dogs have been advantageous for thousands of years to humankind. A current movie, Alpha, depicts what could be one of the first transformations of dog and man into a symbiotic relationship. Alpha is an excellent movie and I would highly recommend the movie for viewing. Throughout history, dogs have been a safeguard to alert a home and village of approaching marauders and thieves. The Romans trained dogs for battle. Dogs have been used as scouts to explore the path ahead. Dogs have been used for hunting, protection of farm animals, and farm gardens. Dogs have been used for tracking lost people and escape prisoners. In the modern age, dogs have been used for locating explosive devices and drugs. In some societies, dogs are seen as a source of food. Dogs have been long used for what we call therapy dogs. These advantages are made possible by the dog's intelligence, loyalty, but most of all by the amazing powers of smell and hearing. Others see disadvantages in dogs as to their maintenance costs, which could be exasperated in an emergency situation, plus the disadvantage of dogs barking or motive motion, revealing your location. Revealing your location could be catastrophic if you were in stealth mode and hiding from those who would do you evil. Meet Samson, one of my daughter's eight-month-old German shepherds. Samson can be serious intimidation. This is him coming at me in slow motion. The first time he did that, he did not know me, and I seriously was concerned that I was about to become his chewing toy for the day. Thankfully, the granddaughter called to him to sit, which he obeyed. Samson's a working dog. Most of the day he is a sentry dog patrolling the farm and house that my daughter, her husband, and family own. He has been trained by the daughter to know his job is barking out an alarm if any coyotes come for their poultry or rabbits. He also barks at any unknown human on the property. He also will bark at deer who approach the property to defend the large garden. Recently, he has been in training to be a scout dog. You should note how he zigzags in front of the daughter and granddaughter, periodically returning to his family as a base. At times, my daughter commands him to walk beside her. Also note with his black fur, when he stands in a shadow, he is extremely difficult to see. At night, he is virtually invisible. Surprisingly, Samson obeys the granddaughter. Our theory is this is the that the granddaughter has been present at many of the training sessions, that she models her commands after her mother's commands to the dog. Perhaps mother and daughter smell similar. Samson is friendly to me but will not follow commands from me. Note I have only been around him a couple of times in his life. Samson is loyal, his keen smell and hearing enables him to track animals and people. He is a natural instinct to defend the family. He is a great family and guard dog and with just a little training to bring his strengths out. Small dogs are seldom listed as a prepper dog, but perhaps this should be rethought. Let me introduce you to Barkley, a cockapoo dog, one half poodle and one half cocker spaniel. He is 18 years old. Barkley is now fully retired and spends much of his day sleeping. He has earned that retirement by being an extremely good home alarm dog in his younger days and being a play dog for two daughters and two grandchildren. I could even submit that he saved my life or at least grave harm. When he was five or six, we were scouting a trailhead when he suddenly sat down, refusing to go further, with a sort of body and facial look of, Are you crazy? Don't go any further. Regardless of my efforts to move him, he refused to move forward. So in frustration, I took him 
back to the car. Being curious as to what spooked him, I walked a hundred yards back to the spot where he stopped. Looking around, I saw nothing, and then I heard the rattlesnake. Looking closer, about ten feet ahead, I saw the rattlesnake. I slowly backed up. This is Joy. She is a three-year-old Morkie, one-half Yorkshire Terrier and one-half Maltese. She's my sister's dog, and besides her role as a family dog, she is a house alarm that needs no electricity. Even my sister can't get into the house without Joy barking up a storm. In the past, this breed ate mice, small rodents, etc. In an end-of-the-world scenario, they could keep the pestilence down. I think in many emergencies, a dog selected for proper attributes and trained can be of immense help. Now, in the Ukraine famine of 1930 to 1933, when 5 to 13 million Ukrainians were starved to death by the communist socialists, many dogs were used as food. Indeed, at one point, the communists required all dogs to be killed and their fur turned into the government. This was done to deprive the people of the dogs as a source of food. In the Chinese famine of 1958 to 1962, 45 million Chinese were starved due to the communist socialist economic plans. Dogs simply disappeared as they were used as a food source. The people resorted in some cases to eating tree bark and mud in a desperate attempt to remain alive. Thus, I submit concerns that dogs will give your location away is highly unlikely. If things get that desperate, few, if any, dogs will remain. Some of these fears are promoted by the extreme conditions of the fictitious novel, The Road. However, spoil alert. At the end of the movie, the surviving family has a dog, which seems to be well trained. I submit in the austere conditions of the novel, the dog's ability to detect humans hundreds of yards away would be tremendously advantageous, and a dog even could be helpful in locating food caches or in hunting. So in conclusion, I would state, I want Samson on Team Dakota Preparedness. Be prepared.